This is going to be a solution for practice problem 8.10 from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Alexander and Sadiku. So we have here a second order circuit and the problem says for T greater than zero obtain V naught which is this voltage over here in the circuit. So we start by f understanding what happens before time greater than zero and the reason why is because our voltage source is 35 times a step function so step function from zero onward is going to be one and from zero and negative time so t less than zero it's going to be zero so when the voltage source is set to zero we are left with a short circuit zero voltage so this is our circuit before time zero so our capacitors are still here this is still our voltage of interest V naught this is 1 ohm this is 1 ohm this is 1 over 3 farads this is 1 over 2 so we assume that this has been from negative infinity to zero. So it's been a long time that it, the circuit has been like this before our voltage source comes into play. So in that case, we can assume that it's reached steady state. And in steady state, our capacitors become open circuits. So our circuit will look like this. Here we, I just moved the resistor over here. Our capacitor here opens up, second resistor here, and by the way this voltage was V1, V2, here again we have V1, V2, so the voltage V1 is here, V1, this voltage V2 is here, and our voltage of interest V0 is here, so there's no current running in the circuit this voltage here is simply zero. So this is V1 at zero minus. That's before our voltage source turns on, before you can think of it as the switch turns on. So V1 at zero minus is equal to zero. V2 at zero minus is also equal to zero. There's no current running in the circuit. Our voltage of interest V0 at zero minus is gonna be V1 at zero minus minus V2 at zero minus, therefore V naught at zero minus is gonna be zero. So, before we move on, I wanna bring up the fact that because we're dealing with capacitors, V1 at zero minus and V1 at zero plus, so right the moment that the voltage source kicks in, they're equal, and that's because we know that I of the capacitor is equal to C dV dt. So the voltage across the capacitor cannot change in zero time. Therefore, the moment right when the switch is turned on and the moment before the switch is turned on, the voltage cannot change. Same thing for V2 at zero plus. It cannot change in zero time. Therefore, since V1 at zero plus and V2 at zero plus is still zero, V1 at zero plus is also going to be zero. So this is V naught at zero plus is also going to be zero. So we have our initial condition. Okay, so now we can observe the circuit for time greater than or equal to zero. So that's when our voltage source kicks in. So now we just have 35 volts. So we'll draw the circuit again. Here's the capacitor. Okay, here's our ground. One ohm, one ohm. This is one third farads. One over two farads. I'm gonna call this C1 and this C2, so like this. Uh, this is V naught. This is V2. This is V1. So, right. 
so this is a second order circuit. So we want to find our state variable. So because we have two capacitors, our state variables are simply the voltages across these two capacitors. So we're going to be looking for this equation and this equation so that we can put them in matrix form and find the characteristic equation. So let's start by doing a nodal analysis of this circuit. So this is not a well-behaved circuit because we have a voltage source. So let's first show our branch currents. I'm choosing them arbitrarily. So to write KCL at this node, we would find that I1 equals I2 plus I3. Well, I1, so again, we, have a not, we don't have a well-behaved circuit. So before we even start analyzing this, we need to write down our constraint equation. So we'll call this node V3. And our constraint equation becomes that V3 equals 35 volts. So now we can actually start using nodal analysis to analyze this part. So I1 is simply going to be V3 minus V1, V3 minus V1 over the resistor, which is just 1. I2 is going to be V1 minus V2 over the resistor, which is 1. So V1 minus V2 over 1. And finally, I3, we have a capacitor here. So the current I3, we use our capacitor relationship, is going to be C1, right, because it's C1, dV1 dt. So already we can see that we're starting to find what we're looking for for this first equation. So V1 and V2 are state variables, and we have a constant, which is okay, but V3, we have to figure out what that is. Well, it's a constant, right? V3 is just 35. It's from our constraint equation, so we're in luck. So we have 35 minus V1 equals V1 minus V2 plus C1 is just 1 half dv1 dt. So if we solve for dv1 dt, dv1 dt, we're well, moving everything to the other side and multiplying by 2, we get minus 4 v1 plus 2 v2 plus 70. And as you can see, that's our first equation right here. So this is first equation. But we need to find our second equation. So let's, let's do that. So coming back here, we see that the current going into this capacitor, right? We found the equation for this state variable, which is the voltage across this capacitor. So naturally, our second equation will have to do with the state variable for this capacitor, which is the voltage here. So the current going in here is simply I2. So we can use our capacitor relationship, I2 equals C2 dV2 dt. And from there, we can find our second equation. So let's write it again. We have I2 equals C2 dV2 dt. I2 is simply going to be V1 minus V2. We can move the capacitance C2 to the other side equals dv2 dt. These are state variables, which is good. C2 is a constant. Our constant C2 is just one third. So it's like multiplying this whole thing by three. So finally, our second equation becomes dv2 dt equals 3v1 minus 3v2. And this is our second equation. So if we write the equations in this order, so in other words, dv1 dt, and then the second equation is dv2 dt, in order to preserve the order in the matrix, v1 must be the first variable here, then v2, and same here, v1, then v2. So going back to our first equation, dv1 dt is going to be 4 v1 plus 2 v2 plus 70. 
dv2 dt is going to be 3v1 minus 3v2. So from here, we can form our matrix A. And our matrix A is simply going to be this. We just take the coefficients of v1 and v2 in our respective equations. So to find our characteristic equation, we take the determinant of S times identity matrix minus A and set it equal to 0. So that's going to be this. We have S, 0, 0, S minus A, which is the matrix we just found. And this has to equal 0. So we're going to get S plus 4 minus 3 minus 2, S plus 3, and we take determinant of this. And we set it equal to 0. So if we multiply, if we find a determinant, we're going to get S squared plus 7S plus 12 minus 6 equals 0. So this turns out to be S squared plus 7S plus 6 equals 0. So our roots are going to be S1 equals minus 6 and S2 equals minus 1. So we have here an overdamped response. So, I'll write that down, overdamped. So we know that V0 of T is going to have the following shape. It's going to be A1 e to the first root minus 6T plus A2 e to the minus 1 plus A3. So before we apply our initial conditions, let's see what our particular solution or our steady-state solution is going to look like. So particular, particular solution or steady-state solution, we're going to look and see what that's like. So our circuit, imagining, let's say it's been on for a long time, is going to look like this. Our capacitors in steady-state become open circuit. So this is what we're going to have. Capacitors open up. Okay. This is plus minus. This would be V1. You can think of it as V1 at infinity, right? In steady state, V2 at infinity. And here we're going to still have V0, but at infinity. This is 35 volts. So v1 at infinity there's no current flowing so we just have the open circuit voltage which is just 35 volts similarly v2 again is the open circuit voltage but because there's no current there's no voltage drop across these two so again we get 35 volts v0 at infinity is going to be v1 at infinity plus v2 at infinity, which is 35 minus 35, which becomes 0. So we know now that our steady state constant A3 is going to be 0, right? Because if we did V0 at infinity, we, we would have A1 e to the minus 6 times infinity plus A2 e to the minus infinity. This should be a t minus t here. Plus a3 and this whole thing has to equal 0. Well, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, so we get A3 equals 0. Okay, now what remains to be done is to apply initial conditions to find V1, I'm sorry, A1 and A2. So we found earlier, it was over here, initially, that V0 at 0 plus which is the same as V0 at 0 minus, is going to be 0. So initially it's 0. So we have V0 at 0, so going back to our general equation here, V0 at 0, so let's plug in. It'd be A1 e to the 0 plus A2 e to the 0 plus A3 we found was 0. This goes to 1, this goes to 1, and this whole thing has to equal 0. So we find that A1 plus A2 equals 0. Now our second initial condition is the derivative of V0 at time equal to 0. Well, taking the derivative of this guy, we have the minus 6 that comes down. So minus 6A1 
e to the minus 6t, this will be evaluated at t equals 0, plus this will be a minus 1, a2, e to the minus t evaluated at t equal to 0. And the derivative of a constant is 0. And what is this going to be? Well, it's going to be dv1 dt at time equal to 0 minus dv2 dt at time equal to 0. And why is that? Well, we know that v0 is v1 minus v2. So if I take derivative of everything, we get that dv0, dv0 dt equals dv1 dt minus dv2 dt. And if we evaluate them all at 0, that's what we get. So we can find what these values are by simply going back to our equation, right? dv1 dt at 0, well, that's going to be, it's equal to this, right? So v1 at 0 was 0. v2 at 0 is 0. However, we're left with 70. So the, uh, let me write like this, dv0 dt, I'll write it again. This exponential at time 0 becomes 1, so we're left with minus 6a1. Here, again, this exponential at time equals 0 becomes 1, so we're left with minus a2. And we still remain this part. So this part we just showed is going to be 70. dv2 dt, go back here, at time equals 0. Well, v1 at 0 was 0, v2 at 0 was 0. So it's zero. And we're left with this. So we get minus 6a1 minus a2 equals 70. So we have this equation, we have this equation, two equations, two unknowns, we can solve it. If I multiply this equation by 6, I would get 6a1 plus 6a2 equals zero. Now if I add these two, I can get rid of these and I'm left with 5a2 equals 70. Therefore, a2 equals 14. Well, we know from this equation that a1 must be minus a2. Therefore, a1 equals minus 14. Finally, we can write our equation as a1 was minus 14 e to the minus 6t a2 was 14 e to the minus 6t and this is voltage so our units are in volts. So our final answer is this.